You get in the twist, they get in all jelly Cause you think I'm with them, but you know you're not ready My truth got me up at 6am Tapping in the Zoom cause my God is the rem Straight up, he died for me When I pull up, I know he got me Don't play faves, we all his queens When they say woman, they mean God Hey good people, welcome to Determined Women of Destiny, the place where passion meets purpose, where amazing women doing amazing things come to show off everything that they do. You will be influenced and inspired, encouraged and empowered, along with a whole lot of motivation so that you can believe dreams really do come true. I'm your host, Yvonne, the Motivator Man. Dr. Pepper Bonet Martin has agreed to come back. And if you were with me last week, you were able to see the beginning of this. If you weren't with me last week, after you watched this show, I adjure you. Now, that's a church word. <laughs> I adjure you to go back and watch it because she talks about the basis of her book. And her book is, I'm married, but I feel like I'm single five steps to successfully navigate a painful divorce. Y'all go get this book. Mm -hmm. Because even if you're not going through a divorce or have a bad relationship, there are tips in here for the maintenance of your marriage. So I've given y'all enough intro. I want to get back into this Mm -hmm. because uh, last week, you know, uh, we heard about her being sick and you know, just being left for dead and how she married her friend. They met in college and they carpooled. So a marriage that was really good Mm -hmm. in 10 years, Mm -hmm. you know, so who would ever think that after that 10 year mark, infidelity would come in, the ability to steal your identity, Mm -hmm. your credit, leave you for dead, you know, and now we're at the point in a story where things are really getting heated. Mm-hmm. People are calling you, mm-hmm. they're threatening you, threatening your family. Mm-hmm. So how did you uh, navigate through that and, and just get out of that uh, to the point where people would understand, this is his doing, not my doing. Right. You need to go after him. You need to leave my family alone mm-hmm. and you need to leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Now you're very sweet, Dr. Pepper. Thank you. But you definitely look like you can hold your hand. <laughs> So I really cannot see somebody running up to you in the street talking about yo yo what <laughs> your discernment works well yo what, 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 what. <laughs> you want to come for me are you sure I got a little something in the back seat for you <laughs> you just stand right there I got you uh, yes I got you so I I can't I can understand the broken heart mm-hmm. and I can understand the pain mm-hmm. but how did you get these people to leave you alone? Well, there's some things I cannot ever say. (laughs) But I I would say, in all honesty, I, this is where I, and this may sound cliche-ish or even strange, to someone in your audience that may not even attend church, Mm -hmm. but it's still the truth. Mm -hmm. I had grown up loving the Lord, Mm -hmm. but at this point, I got to know God in a whole nother way. And my prayer life became so intensified because the core answer to your question really is prayer Mm. i did not know what to do i was born and raised in the bronx and i lived in two neighborhoods in the bronx and neither one of them were pleasant (laughs) (laughs) one was just better than the other Mm -hmm. and it was nice for a little while when we moved But after some years, the neighborhood started to change complexion. And with the complexion changing, the socioeconomic status changed. Mm -hmm. And thus, it became known as what we call the hood. hood. 
And with growing up now, I'm a teenager in high school living in the hood. I did not live in just any hood. My street became known by law enforcement international as the drug capital of the world. So I was constantly seeing people get shot and stabbed. I constantly witnessed crimes. I remember having a couple of times duck under my bed with the flashlight to complete homework assignments and being yeah. determined that I went to private school. So I grew up living in two worlds. Mm -hmm. And um, I am saying that to really lay a backdrop. Though I grew up in the household of faith and went to private school, where I lived was different than what I was experiencing socially. I had skating lessons and all of these wonderful things. My mom was deliberate about making sure that the hood did not infiltrate her home. And so she was deliberate about making choices about who I socialized with and the things that I did to make me eclectic and well-rounded to be educated, to make sure that I would get out of that scenario. Why is that important? Because as much as she did to insulate me with the amount of crime that we were surrounded by, I still made friends with some of these people and I never crossed over into their world, but they knew who I was and they loved me like their sister. So therefore, fast forwarding to this situation, oh, yeah. I had I access I know. <laughs> to yeah. people that uh -huh. could have taking care of this for me. Yes. And as a result, it took extreme spiritual discipline to contain me from even calling them up and asking any of them who would have gladly done it just for me to, to handle and, and this stressful and arduous and difficult place to live. I lived from, from Monday through Saturday in hell and had to go to church on Sunday and sit in the front and leave and look like I just had a wonderful life. And sat right next to this person. That's correct. And they're doing all of this to you. And they're doing all of this and from the phone calls, but he didn't give me what he was supposed to give me and his business and um, all of these customers and all kinds of horrible things, letters, how they got access to our post office box. I was dealing with the people that he were in um, he was in inappropriate relationships with having affairs with one woman, he had given her our address and she was getting her mail at our house. This was before I got sick. There, in, then after no, seeing no, that. No, no, don't we, go we're not going to. Mm -mm. oh. <laughs> go <first. laughs> Yes, the good man of God. In the Bible, it says, stay long. Take a moment <laughs> to think about it. Her mail was coming to the house. Yvonne? To, to your house. To my house. My home that I've decorated. You see that chair? I put it there. This is my, my house, and I live here. My mailbox. So at first, I just thought, the first time I saw it, because I didn't know who this person was, I said, okay, the mailman made a mistake. I had to go to the post office. Come to find out, they showed me the card. This person, and I have to say person right now, mm -hmm. 
had the, the you know those postal offices yeah. and you have to change your yeah. address you and add address or address. add people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There was a card that had been submitted. Oh, to add the person. To add this person and then I got to find out who she was. And so she was did, a customer. Okay, so you add. Who, who's this person? Oh, I, I, I didn't ask him. I found out my own. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. now I had to start making appearances back at this business that I helped build. Okay. And I searched for files myself. And I realized this was a customer. That has uh, now that has transitioned to a relationship. Girlfriend. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And using your ad. That's right. That's right. Phone calls was coming from women to our home. So that means he wasn't making wise decisions because if you are a real player, you, you don't, don't get call. you don't get calls. So at this point, he didn't care. He didn't care and he didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so now I'm dealing with that. But at the same time, I'm also dealing with threatening phone calls. Mm. All day, all week, it was I was bombarded with intense negativity, mental, emotional, and spiritual warfare. And when I began to realize what was happening, I didn't have time to now figure out how to get out. I had to deal with it day to day because now I have to survive. Mm -hmm. I have to keep from getting killed. Wow. I have to figure out Who's the who I'm living like this? Like, who is there somebody following me? Um, is there somebody going to get me? Did he tell these people that I am his wife? Like, my, my name is odd. Like, what, what's what? I don't know who all are out there. So, every time you step foot out your house, I'm in fear, right? You just can't go to the grocery store. No. You have to memorize all the cards that's, that's correct. on the block. And that's you correct. back, if one's missing or one's added, that's right. now there's a new There's field. a new intrepidation. And my upbringing in the hood prepared me mm -hmm. for this level of survivalship. The irony is that I didn't, I grew up in it, but insulated from it. But I still ended up somehow living like a victim of my circumstances that my mom worked very hard to keep me from. To keep me mm -hmm. from. Oh, yeah. And so it was it was the dichotomy of two worlds that had just collapsed on me from a person that I'm doing like this. How do you even get here? Mm -hmm. He ra he's raising a two family home, two parent home in Westchester County. Like what happened in here? To get you to think that it was okay to to, like to do and to to yes and to even entertain this kind of uh, of these kinds of tactics to do business and, and the bottom line is he was so desperate and hungry for success that he was willing to compromise even his own laws to get it so success in business. To be a successful businessman, and it it was the opposite. That's correct. So he, it was just greed and money. Wow. And 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 my thing is, it's like I'm saying now, you're also supposed to be a man of God. You not hearing God? Where? How far away from God's voice are you? Mm. How deep can you go? We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is the scripture? But like you said, particularly when you read it, you can go for so far. So this was a point that was tremendously unexpected. But I had to quickly shift. I was just going to say. I shifted and I accepted it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to analyze it anymore. Mm -hmm. I had to accept where I was. And I said, I'm, I'm getting out of this. I'm unraveling myself out of this. But all of these things contributed to 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 the decline of my health, my my physical health, my emotional health, and my financial health. He never put his hands on me. He never, I never was a victim of domestic violence. I never had scars on me. No, you weren't a victim of 
physical violence. I was a victim of financial abuse. That's domestic violence. That's correct. And, fine. and I didn't know that. And then. mental abuse. That's correct. That is fine. And I didn't realize that. And that was the whole irony. And that's what I want to say to your audience. There were all different types of abuses. And I was abused tremendously in every sense of the word that was not seen by physical means. And in the church community, when there are no signs, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist and it's easy to hide. And we're supposed to sing and shout and praise God over it. And you're not supposed to say anything about no. it. No. And because that's going to bring shame and right. praying for somebody, covering them in prayer does not mean you can seal their the sin. truth right. and their sin. And these are things that I had to learn brutally on my own that I legitimately did not know. And I wrote this book to be an educational tool to, to shine the light on darkness, not to get back at my ex-husband. I've even changed the names. I don't even use real names to um, basically prove that I'm about the essence of the message and not about the person. Um, I'm sure that I pray that he has made his peace with God and he's restored, but that's not the point. The point is, is that he may be all right with God now, right? but this still happened. And the story needs to still be told because there are people who are going through this and there are leaders telling congregations stay they're supposed to go through right and stay in it you and, can pray through and it get through, everything that's right. will be all right that's like right. i said um in part one my aunt told me your parents paid too much money mm -hmm. it was it was too much of a great day mm -hmm. for you to walk away and then the one that really clinched it for me and has severed our relationship to this day, mm -hmm. men are going to be men. Mm -hmm. See, for mm -hmm. me, I have uh, my oldest niece, if she would have come to me and and told her, told me the story that my aunt knew from my mother, um, she's in South Carolina. I, I'm just jumping on a plane. We're going to handle this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, <laughs> mm -hmm. not going to tell her, mm -hmm. you know, men are going to be men, so suck mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to tell her um, oh, well, you know, it was such a wonderful wedding. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. It, it's more than that. And it's people with those type of ideologies that throw it on us mm -hmm. that we listen to them. That's because right. Because they have authority. Right. They're, mm -hmm. they're our authority figures. Mm -hmm. So we stay mm -hmm. when we should go. Right. But you one day had that revelation. That's right. And said, you know what? I'm coming back to who I am. That's right. And tell us about that time. Well, I mentioned it last week. If somebody leaves you for dead, that's real. That's a that's that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of the hospital, I said, I'm not going home. You're going to take me to my mother's house. Back into the hood is where I found myself. In the very surrounding that's negative, in the very surrounding that people run from, Mm -hmm. crime riddled I went back to that place and that is where I got my peace <laughs> and I escaped out I, I I I said no I'm not going back in that house and when I got there my mom helped to care for me and waited on me until I was healed but I didn't even wait until I was completely physically healed about three days after being back with her, I said, Ma, I need you to come with me back to our place. We had moved at this point from Rockland County to Westchester County. We were living in Fleetwood. That's a section in Mount Vernon. And I said, just come with me there. She said, okay. And I had boxes. And I was stopping at stores, asking supermarket managers for boxes. And then I had some containers that I had purchased. Went there, started packing up my stuff. She said, what, what, what are we doing? 
mom, don't ask me no questions right now. Just I'll explain it. Just start putting what I tell you. Put them in this box, that box. Okay. And then she said, are you taking his stuff? I said, no, leave his stuff to the side. All right. That's what she said. So, and she just followed and she didn't ask any questions. So now I understand what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know. Exactly. Now I know. Now I know. You leaving. Uh-huh. It's done. It's done. It's, done. it's, it's a wrap. Okay. And um took it back. I said, um, Ma, I know how you are with keeping things in your living room, you know, and clutter, but I need these boxes here and I am going to work to be out of here in about six months. She said, she took me by my wrist and she said, you doing this, you take it down. Mm -hmm. And she left me. She didn't, she didn't push the envelope, but she did show concern because this was way out of character. And she also had her own relationship with her son-in-law. That was very pleasant. So this was not something that was easy for her either. And she had to hear about all of the things later about someone that she loved. That's correct. Very much. Because he's much been in her life now. Okay, you were together 20 years. Well, 10 years and then the, right. the yep. last 10. Mm -hmm. But then you went to college together. We went to college. So there was at least 14 to 15 That's years. That's correct. That ate at my table that's right you were my son that's my son you know and i loved you it wasn't it was an incredible relationship that the two of them had um there were days where they would just be them they would go hang out wow and so that we we all were close and um and so now this dynamic is unraveling before her eyes and she's seeing a different person emerging her daughter. Now she wants to know what did he do mm -hmm. to compel this out of me? But you didn't tell her right away. I didn't. So you still covering him? I'm still covering him wow. because internally, and I don't, that's still something I'm exploring, to be honest. Um, but I now have a better understanding of myself. I tend to do that for people. Mm -hmm. that I'm loyal by nature and that loyalty is good but sometimes when it's too much it can be you cause your demise as well is it a possibility that telling what he did was so unimportant compared to you getting to the person you are now oh wow I've never been asked that and I've never thought about it that way but I would have to say yes yeah. From hearing your story, you know, yeah, as as a woman, you know, um, I'm gonna sing like the Temptations. Bet you're wondering how I do. You know, everybody knows. You know, I'm gonna let everybody. I just got signed on the back of my car telling the whole story. You know, um, but it seemed like the important person, which which definitely should have been at this point mm -hmm. in the story, was you. Mm -hmm. And it was getting back your strength, getting mm -hmm. back your personhood. So him being who he was that was on him at, at that point that's what i was hearing i gotta go to break but mm -hmm. like always y'all come on back because it's, it's good it's good it's good determined women of destiny is more than a talk show or a podcast more than a facebook group or tiktok videos it's a tribe that vibes it's a networking hub for women to funnel ideas and endeavors to connect helping each other be the best version of themselves independently and collectively if you would like to be a guest on the show or would like to join this great group of women please email determined women destiny at gmail.com hey good people welcome back if you're just tuning in welcome to determined women of destiny please like share and subscribe and tell your girlfriends tell your boyfriends tell your mamas your aunts tell everybody to come and check out this show i am here with dr pepper Bonet Martin. She is the pastor of Destiny House Christian Center, located at 70 North, North Main, Street. Main Street, Freeport. 
and she has been talking about her book and the book is I'm married but I feel like I'm single and you need to go check it out she's been telling us her story of being a woman of God married to a man of God mm -hmm. and how that marriage fell apart and how she survived it and this is part two because her story was too good to cut off in like 30, 45, even an hour. So before we went to break, she was discussing how um, she just went back. You went back to you mm -hmm. and, and put in that focus on you. Mm -hmm. So when you put that focus on you, did you start seeing everything coming back together? Yes. And everything just flourishing and blooming the way that it should have gone. Yes. Yes, and even then some. And so I began to work on me. I began working out. I hired a trainer. Um, I changed my life. I've lost a significant amount of weight. I reconnected with my extended family, family that I hadn't even gotten a chance to know. Um, my cousins and I started going out um, uh, and doing things that we both liked. And that was Broadway plays, um, developed relationships with some girlfriends of hers. And I was kind of engrafted into the group. And now we are friends. We are like sisters till this day. And we made it a point to have girls night out at least once a quarter. Okay. And so those things. And then I began doing things that I realized that I had stopped doing. And it had been uh, over a decade. I love the theater. I love music. I love the arts. And I began to do those things. I went back to school. I got a master's degree in special education, a master's degree in school leadership, a master's degree in school counseling, and an advanced diploma in school district administration. You were serious. I was serious. Yes, I yes. got additional certifications. My income doubled. I moved moved into a luxury apartment building in Marinette, New York. Um, I was now at this point married on paper. I have a chapter in the book called um, No Deeds, Just Paper, and which I had discussed in uh, one of my lives. Um, with um, Brigitte uh, Williams James, and um, we talked about what that was. But then, as my life began to come back, and I began to do some rediscovering of some past things that I had let go that really was a part of my essence, that experience gave me the material that I needed to finish this book. And so I would say to your followers, your subscribers, and your listening audience, that to anyone who is in a situation as bad, worse, or it may not necessarily be in a marriage, it could be with a, a failed relationship with a parent, a sibling, or some other type of business partnership. Whatever it is where you feel totally drained, deceived, and devastated by the loss, I want to tell you as a living witness, you can come back. Mm. I have become known as the queen of the comeback. And it is critical. Forgiveness is critical. And not just saying it but really releasing the negative energy and is predicated on what you said earlier. You said all of the things that I had encountered that was negatively imposed upon me, that wasn't my problem. That was his problem. My character was, fed, was good. My thinking was off. He had bad character. And I had not accepted it because I was determined to try to change. We cannot change people. And we have to stop marrying and getting affiliated and entangled with projects. Oh. And we want to build partners. We need to embrace our partner. Our partner needs to come ready. You know, it's not 50-50. It's 100-100. And so... 
I want to encourage everyone, if you are recovering or transitioning, I want to encourage you to build the strength and the capacity to let the past go. Forgive yourself first. Forgive the person who breached your trust, but then be deliberate about creating a plan of recovery and create a vision for your life to fuel you to your divine destiny. God does not make a mistake and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And despite all that has happened to you, it's legitimate, it's valid. Your story has not ended. This was the very thing that catapulted me into what I'm doing now. And I pastor a church and the title is Destiny House Christian Center. My whole life is about getting people to their destiny and using their trauma as fuel to help them travel to their purpose. When we come back, I want you to give us some ending tips. You guys will be right back. Determined Women of Destiny. Hey, good people. It's Yvonne, the Motivator Man. If you're just tuning in, this is Determined Women of Destiny. My guest is Dr. Pepper Bonet Martin. We've been talking about her book, I'm Married, But I Feel Like I'm Single, Five Steps to Successfully Navigate a Painful Divorce. And you can get this at Amazon. And we've just been talking about um, the ups, the downs, the turnarounds of not only just her relationship, but any relationship. And um, she has, you know, just let us know that um, you know, to Christ, all things are possible. And, you know, if you were able to navigate mm -hmm. through what you navigated through, um, I hope that you guys have gotten some motivation and inspiration if you're in a situation. And if you're not in a situation that you will work on it, maintenance, you cannot drive a car without oil, mm -hmm. am I correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, working on your marriage is the oil in your car. Now, there was some stuff y'all missed because I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't recording. I thought, I thought I was, but um, we'll go back to, um, you know, where we were at mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just talking about uh, how to know mm -hmm. uh, when the person is, is right. And I was just telling the story of a guy that I had met and how I prayed about it. And the guy sent me to Facebook mm -hmm. and showed me through Facebook he was not somebody that thank God yeah. for Facebook. You know, listen, I would have just been part of a harem and been very upset. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing you said that was so important, you was like, it was good until it wasn't. It was good until it wasn't. My marriage was great. It was better than good. It was awesome. And then it wasn't. And I lived in a bipolar relationship where the first half of my relationship was significantly fulfilling. And the next half of it was significantly terrible. And both extremes taught me a valuable lesson about life. And that is to be deliberate about not just enjoying the things that you um, ascertain in life, but to stop to smell the roses. Getting to a goal is important. And we all need that sense of, of self-actualization and fulfillment. But the journey toward getting the goal is equally as important. And I wouldn't have the ministry that I do. I wouldn't have the passion that I do about really doing the work with people, with God's help to getting them to their divine destiny, specifically people who have been traumatized in life and having them go through the steps of being determined to overcome, not just to survive, mm -hmm. but to overcome the pain of trauma. I was a traumatized woman when I got in the relationship, which made me vulnerable mm -hmm. to someone with a predatorial personality. I'm glad you said that mm -hmm. because how many times you'll hear me say that predators 
pick their prey. That's correct. Very wise. That's correct. Very wise. And so not having the skills in place to be able to see those blind spots is something that you can only see or I could only see in retrospect. So if I had not gone through this, I'm not saying that I would encourage people to go through it or you're going to just um, shout echoes of joy. <laughs> no, because it was terrible. But what I can say is no matter how bad things are in your life, in your relationship, whether it's a, a relationship that's romantic, a marriage, whether it's a problem with a sibling, a parent, or a business partner, or if you have incurred any other kind of loss. I had, when I was um, launching the book, I had a woman come up to me who was a nurse at a significantly popular hospital in Connecticut saying she was married and felt like she was single, but it was because her husband, who was the chief of staff of that same hospital, was now debilitated by Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh. And she now became his caretaker. Mm -hmm. And she purchased my book and came to me with tears in her eyes, having the same feelings, but with a whole different circumstance. I have run workshops to young people um, who were children of divorce. And they could relate to how I felt even though they were kids, because the feelings of pain are similar, regardless of your age, the feelings of abandonment and rejection and deceit is not pleasant for anyone. And so if you are encountering any significant type of trauma, it is important to admit that you are in a situation. And then within that period, begin to record and, and write down critical steps that you can begin to take even baby steps to take back your power. My book ends with the chapter called Take Back Your Power. And I encourage people to be very deliberate, to go to God in prayer with the issue, but also prayer, with, um, faith without works is dead. And so you have to pray and then you have to get up and put your faith to work. And you have to connect action with prayer. God wants his people to participate in their own deliverance. And for so many years, I had been a co-conspirator to my own victimization. I had to simply invert that power and to just change it from negative energy to positive energy. And instead of using it against me, I began to repurpose the pain into purpose. And I allowed my trauma to be my fuel. And it became a distinct path of what not to do anymore. Wow. I'm, I was able to um, circumvent future relationships that would have been just as painful for me because of all of the dysfunction that I had lived in prior to my first marriage and that my first marriage made even more illuminating to me. And so I had to deal with all of it. I had to deal with the pain of my marriage, but I went further and I began to do work and partner with God to work on why I was uh, susceptible in the first place so that it would never happen again. So I would encourage everyone, all of your subscribers and followers and listeners to do the work. It's frightening. You may learn some negative things about yourself. You may, you're gonna do a lot of crying, but that's a part of the journey. You're not gonna be there forever. You're in the dash of your birth date and your end date, make it work. Add some pickles and some mayonnaise and some onions to your hamburger and make a decision not to go through life as a plain sandwich. You know, my life, as traumatic as it's been, it's also been filled with tremendous moments of joy. I'm sitting here with a wonderful host okay. and I'm honored to be a part of this, of this um, encounter. But 
I also now know with no fear and no doubt what my life's purpose is. And that is to be a trauma specialist right. and to help people as a pastor, as a speaker, as an educator and as an author. And right now I have authored this book, not just to tell a story, but to be food for people who are encountering a similar circumstance that I did. And being a leader and going through this has a whole new set of pain attached to it because you don't have people that you can go to. Everybody's looking to you for the answers. It's extra embarrassing. It, but it's also extra um, humbling. I was humiliated. I was embarrassed. I was flat broke. I went into homelessness and depression. How can I do that and be an elder? It can happen. But God's hand is never too short, but he can't reach us where we are. And if you cast all of your cares upon him, he will show you that his word is true. He really does care about us. And so use your pain to compel you to pray. My prayer life became so prolific and I'm reaping still the benefits of it today. Mm -hmm. My church reaps the benefits of the anointing that's on my life mm -hmm. as a result of what I've encountered. And my wisdom is so sharp and keen because I made a promise to myself. I will never be in that place again. And I will never allow anybody to use me like that again because I will never allow myself to be that vulnerable. And vulnerability is not bad, but when you're vulnerable and that naive, that doesn't work. So you gotta be vulnerable to be loved and to be loving but you can't let yourself be stupid. <laughs> Stupidity, is, Stupidity a is a whole nother place. And um, I just, just, there were, I just did not really make the critical decisions to, to, to protect my emotions. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. I'm remarried now to a man who I know loves me, who I love very much. And it is demonstrated. It's demonstrated openly, emotionally. Is it perfect? No, but we're good. Bishop Jakes has something called the 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. which I also follow. Mm -hmm. And I've made it, we've made it a part of our life. You get 80% of what you want. That's right. And that other 20%, let's let it go. Let it go. And that's what yeah. I call the negotiables mm -hmm. and the non-negotiables. Don't cover the non-negotiables. Own it. And if that person demonstrates your non-negotiables and it is a non-negotiable where you cannot see yourself modifying, then that's not the person for you. Once again, Dr. Pepper Bonet Martin's book, I'm Married But I Feel Like I'm Single, Five Steps to Successfully Navigate a Painful Divorce. Dr. Pepper, thank you so much. I, I could just do another one. <laughs> you know, we could do part three. I just don't want to take your time. I thank you for the time that you've given me. Mm -hmm. To all of you, please take the information that she gave you um, and, and apply it and, and let it work for you in your relationship, in your marriage, in your divorce, in your aftermath of divorce, even before you get married. She's given us so many tips. Mm -hmm. So until next time, good people, you know what I say. Keep doing what you're doing until you, what you're doing gets done. You've been checking out Determined Women of Destiny. I've been your host, Humble Yvonne. There's a woman that I love.